Hello and welcome to our course on Adobe Photoshop Elements 15. This is the latest version of Adobe's award-winning product which is primarily aimed at amateur photographers but is also used by designers, graphic artists and by many other people who need a good product for editing photos, creating graphics and for cataloguing and finding images. My name is Toby and I'll be your instructor on this course. I'm a specialist in the use of computer software, particularly a desktop software, and I'm also a keen amateur photographer. And I've already developed quite a few courses on Photoshop elements for Simon Says IT. And I've been enjoying using the new version of Photoshop elements, which has some great new features as well as the standard features that I use pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis in many aspects of my work. Now I'm sure that you're keen to get started with Photoshop Elements 15 but in this section I've got some introductory material that's actually very important and first of all I need to explain who this course is for. Now the course overall is aimed at people who have not used Photoshop Elements before so we're starting completely from scratch. If you have used it before, perhaps an older version, maybe even a much older version, then clearly there may well be a lot of material which hasn't very significantly changed and there may be parts of the course that you can skip. What I'm going to try to do in each section of the course is to give you a brief introduction that will tell you what the course is about and generally indicate how much that part of the product has changed in recent versions. Now there are many aspects of Photoshop Elements that have changed very little in recent versions and others that have changed really quite dramatically. So I think it's very important if you have used an older version to at least listen to the introduction to each section to get an idea of whether you need to cover the material that's included in that section or not. By the way, I'm not going to keep saying Photoshop Elements or Photoshop Elements 15. I'm going to refer to it generally as PSC. The next thing I need to point out is that there are various aspects of the use of PSC that depend on your locale. Now I'm based in the UK, but generally speaking throughout most of the course I will have my locale set to USA. So I'll be using what is primarily USA settings. Now amongst the important aspects of locale is the Adobe website itself. We will be referring to the website from time to time and what you can see in front of you here is a page from the Adobe UK website. There will generally be an equivalent page for your locale and the page that you look at may look quite different from the one that I'm looking at and again I'll try to point this out when it happens. One aspect of this is, for example, if you need to buy something such as PSC 15, if I click on the Buy Now button here, what I'm going to see are UK prices, which of course will not be the same as your local prices if you're in a different locale. So be wary of locale. Now something else that you can see on this page is a reference to Adobe Photoshop Elements and Adobe Premiere Elements. Photoshop is basically for still photography and Premiere Elements basically for moving photography video. Now on this course we're dealing with Photoshop Elements, still photography. And I really won't be referring to Premiere Elements at all. There's absolutely no reason that you shouldn't buy the bundle with both products in it, particularly if you also do video photography. But on this course, we're looking at still photography. And one other important point to make here is that you may well have heard of Photoshop, and you may wonder what Photoshop and Photoshop Elements have to do with each other. Photoshop Elements is actually a cut-down version of Photoshop although it's not really that cut down most aspects of Photoshop are present in Photoshop elements as well however there are some key aspects of Photoshop which are pretty much essential for professional photographers such as the use of the CMYK color mode and these features are not in Photoshop elements so for professional photographers they very often need the full-blown Photoshop product 
Having said that, if you don't need these specific features, then Photoshop Elements can do an absolutely excellent job for you. And if eventually you are going to move up to using full-blown Photoshop, learning Photoshop Elements is a really good way of achieving a very big stepping stone in the road to becoming a Photoshop user. Although this is a course for Photoshop Elements beginners, I am going to be covering most aspects of Photoshop Elements and in achieving a level of expertise in your use of Photoshop Elements, you really will be acquiring skills that would be very useful if you later decide to move up to Adobe Photoshop. So having told you a little bit about the course, the next thing I need to talk about is how to acquire PSE 15 and I'm going to talk about that in the next section. I'll see you then.